Bucky, congratulations, number one, and thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. Glad to be on the show. Man, how how strange, first of all, has life been for you uh, with all this, the coronavirus, you were able to get through the finals, uh, and then a couple of weeks later, I mean, if this if this thing would have hit a little bit earlier, we wouldn't have seen uh, the, the great finals we had down at the BJCC, and just how has your life changed through all this? Man, I tell you, strange times, you know, and I, I appreciate you guys continuing to fight through and host your show, because, you know, anything we can do to get people to take their mind off of the situation we're in just for a second, you know, it's worth it, um, but been unique you know we got through the finals but you know i'm learning this through recruiting a lot of these players did not get to finish their season um you know, obviously spring, spring sports were missed but it's a unique, unique time we'll always remember but sometimes times like this cause you to reflect and put life into perspective and you know some things that you thought were some of the most important things in life realize that hey you know there's bigger things that matter and people prioritize accordingly congratulations on on, on being hired at at samford um, looking at your resume makes me realize that I've wasted my life, uh, because, uh, you're, you're, you're 36 and, uh, you became the head basketball coach at Mountain Brook at age 24. And before you arrived at Mountain Brook, the school had never won a state championship. And now you've won five state championships, and there's a lot of people in basketball circles uh, who who like think of you as a, a young Mike Shashevsky, and 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 really, I, I've just seen uh, just uh, and read so many uh, glowing reports about you. But what what has been you know again? You're just sort of can you kind of walk? Well, let's do this. Can you walk us through just sort of how you? Uh, got into basketball and and became a head coach at such a young age and what was your sort of guiding philosophy at mountain brook that uh helped you have so much success yeah absolutely so you know i grew up loving basketball and i think you know i played all sports till about sixth seventh grade but you know mountain brook wasn't known for basketball and and everyone said you know you can't play college basketball for, for mountain brook so even though I was probably a little better at baseball and was a decent little football player, but I decided, hey, I uh, since you can't make it in basketball, then I'm going to play basketball. So that's what I went after it, and I uh, just went after it every day. Came, ended up going to Birmingham Southern. I was a good player at Mount Brook High School. Went to Birmingham Southern, played there. But during my time at Birmingham Southern, I, I played for a great college coach named Dwayne Reball. And if you people that know basketball in this state, you know when you go down with the kind of the five people in the state that had the biggest impact and the best coaches of all time in the state. He's in there. And um, so I played for him. And during my time playing for him, I coached AU basketball. So I was, you know, 20, 19, 20, 21 years old coaching for the Alabama I can through education program, the Alabama ice. And we, uh, coaching kids are 16, 17 years old. So I kind of cut my teeth doing that. Found out I really loved it. I got done playing, went over there to Mount Brook high school, coached at JV for two years with my, uh, coach who coached me in high school, then right on, to varsity basketball my philosophy at the time was you know back then everybody felt that you know over the mountain schools had to play in the 30s and 40s and play slow basketball to win and i just didn't think that was enjoyable i said, said look we're going to find the most fun way to win we're going to play attacking basketball and we're going to do things to make basketball popular in our in our at our school and in our city and so that's what was our goal that's kind of what we did and it was built around guys that we're going to play extremely hard play unselfish and play with a lot of confidence and so um, we did that, created our own unique style, you know, a lot of pressure up, down, lots of threes, and um, had a lot of success doing it. And I think the game grew in our city in Mount Brook, but it also grew across the state. And I think more people realized, hey, you, there's not just one way to play the game. And um, that's what I'm most proud of. I think that our success allowed us to have success locally, statewide, and then on a national level, but I also think it made the game of basketball a lot better in the state. Uh, Coach, this Trent Richardson, um, how can you, can you just walk us through like a little bit of, if if you can, of the conversation that took place when they, you know, you was interviewing for the job when they hired you, um, you know, and just how much of a big of a jump it is because it's a lot of different stuff you got to go through now, you know, as far as travel, recruiting, especially what we got going on now with the coronavirus. You know, how do you plan to, you know, go on? With all that, uh, with, with with the recruiting and stuff, and you know, just just kind of jump into the conversation of you know just becoming a head coach and making that big jump. 
Yeah, you know, the, the biggest thing is I've always been a head coach, and I think that's what, <clears throat> you know, that's what sometimes can be missed is, you know, a lot of guys that uh, they get their first college job have never been a head coach. They've never called a timeout. And there's people that are successful in that role, but the reality of it is I know that there's several high school coaches that could be great college coaches. You know, you got to kind of have the mindset of a CEO. It's not just about what you what you do between the lines. You know, you always got to, uh, you know, you always have to be ready to organize your program to be successful. You know, and that's from you know every single angle. Um, but you know, I, I just want people to know the, the high school coaches out there that could be listening to this that this is our chance. And you high school coaches that have great players. Um, you know, I would love to hear from you guys because I know if we're successful, it's going to provide opportunities for other high school coaches. You know, we've been told that, oh, well, this isn't the way you can't go from high school to college. So I'm looking forward to building this. I'm looking forward to recruiting your players. And hopefully the high school coaches are out there and they're a Sanford Bulldogs fan because this should be this team for all high school coaches. And all Sky high school coaches have the players. And so I'm looking forward to proving a lot of people wrong, that there's not just one way to go about it. And I'm looking up to unite all the high school coaches together during this recruiting process and form something really special at Sanford. We're visiting with the uh, new Sanford uh, basketball coach, and that's Bucky McMillan, formerly of Mountain Brook, and uh, making the jump now to college as uh, their uh, new head coach announced yesterday. As far as Mountain Brook, I know a lot of people in, in this in the Birmingham area and, and in especially the Mountain Brook area wondering who's next up. Do you, do you have a uh, particular person that's been with you for a while that could step into that role, or do you even get involved in that decision at all? Yeah, you know, I, there, there's some some people that have been with me a, a while that, that could do a fantastic job. Obviously, I can't speak for the administration. I just know that those guys, uh, our administrators, are great, and they always make the right decision. So I know our program will be left in good hands, and with what we built will be everlasting there. You know, so all the way down, our program started starts in the second grade at Mountain Brook. So, you know, these guys have had a lot to look forward to, and the guys that have coached with me, there's one guy in particular that's coached with me since the beginning. And um, I know we'll be in good hands, and I've told people this. I've told the people of Mountain Brook, look, we're not – I'm not leaving Mountain Brook basketball. We're, we're just taking Mountain Brook basketball to a college. And so kind of like we have our own college team to the Mountain Brook faithful, and I can't wait to see them packing out the Pete Han over there on Lakeshore Drive. Coach, we have uh, Walt Williams in studio with us, and his son, Hunter, played, played for you at Mountain Brook. And uh, – Walt likes to claim that he's got a better jump shot than, than Hunter. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that's when, not when, true. when you uh, – that's not true? Okay. <laughs> no. uh, but uh, th- th- did you have to deal with overbearing parents like Walt uh, who were telling you how to coach? Walt was one of the great ones. And I'm going to tell you what, his son was a great shooter and a great athlete. So uh, – well, anything Walt told you about being better than his son, I, I, I can't vouch for that. But uh, no, you, there's obviously you're going to deal with that in all high school at the high school level. But enough isn't talked about the other side of that. Some of my best friends and guys that I know who are friends of mine, I met coaching, and they were parents of players. So you know, you take the good with the bad, obviously. But you know, you got to understand. I mean, you know, a child is is a parent's most prized possession. So I mean. I give them a pass a lot of times, but you know, years later, <laughs> um, even parents you've had problems with usually come around, and um, and everything usually shakes out to be all good. Coach, man, you was named uh, Michael Jordan Coach of the Year. Uh, you got the Jordan Brand All Star Classic. Um, you know how you know, you know, just that process, man. You know, just all the success you had. You was, uh, three hundred thirty three games you won, out and you lost seventy four. That's a that's. That's huge, you know. How do you even, you know, follow up with that? You know, whoever coming behind you, man. I, you know, them big shoes to fill, man. I, I felt, you know, a certain type of way when I left Alabama, and I wasn't gonna leave until I felt like Eddie Lacy was ready uh, to step in those shoes, and that was a big decision on me as far as leaving. Um, when he learned how to use his body, as far as you know, him being bigger and being able to run people over, uh, I, I felt comfortable, you know, enough to leave him. Uh, to leave Alabama so like how do you even you know 
you know, set your faith on, you know, okay, we're going to be okay when I leave. Cause I know that's a big part of you. Cause that's, you know, that's something that you, that, that, that's become your baby. Mountain Brooks has become your baby. And that was your first head coach job uh, as a high school coach. So, you know, how does that, you know, how does that, you know, comfort you? Yeah. You know, it's just the people that have been with me, the coaches uh, that have been with me and I've just got trust in the administration. And they, they'll make the right decision on the right guy that they'll hire. But, you know, the guys who have been with me before um, that are still involved in the program, I mean, they're not trying to reinvent the wheel. And, you know, I think that, you know, you notice this, that, you know, when you develop a culture at some place, the culture, um, you know, as long as it's people that were there to help create the culture, um, maintain those same standards of excellence every day, then um, that culture will continue to be exactly what it is. And that's one thing that's been unique about our run is that we just had such a long run, year in, year out. We, we've won a lot of games, obviously. We won championships. We became a national team. Um, but I think that win, lose, or draw, you know, if you saw our, our guys play, you would be proud to be associated with our program or proud to be a Mountain Brook supporter just because of the tenacity they played with, the way that they played for each other and it's their overwhelming confidence when they were on the big stage. Now, I don't think that's going to change. You know, I think Mountain Brook basketball is here to stay. Um, and I'm looking forward to it, to watching it. 